So have you ever used your GoPro action camera in an environment with low light, such as indoors or dark forest, and experienced a jittery ghosting appearance to your footage? If you have experienced this with your GoPro, first of all, don't worry. This doesn't mean there's a problem with your GoPro, but it does mean there's something you can do to prevent this. And in today's video, I'm going to explain, first of all, why this happens and exactly what you can do to prevent this from happening again. So first of all, let's talk about why this happens. When you see that jittery ghosting appearance to your GoPro footage, there are three factors at work that are causing this. Now, each of these factors in and of themselves are not bad. There's no problem with them. It's the combination of them with that low light that causes this problem. The first factor is electronic image stabilization, also known as EIS, and also known as hypersmooth on the GoPro. The second factor is a longer, slower shutter speed. And the third factor is your camera is either in motion or is handheld. And even if you're holding onto your GoPro and you're standing still, your GoPro is still getting moved a little bit you know, you're, you're unable to hold it perfectly still. And just that little bit of movement can cause problems when combined with a slower shutter speed. The end result is that jittery ghosting GoPro footage that's essentially unusable. It looks really bad. And it's really sad if you go out there and film a bunch of footage that you expect to look great when you get home and then you see that jittery ghosting appearance to it. I've had it happen before. Back before I figured this out, I had some footage from some pretty epic adventures that ended up like that, and I was very disappointed, to say the least. So why does this only occur in low lighting? Well, the main reason you don't have to worry about this in good lighting, such as bright sunlight, is because the shutter speed stays high enough or fast enough. It's only when that shutter speed starts to get lower and slower that problems happen. And while you may not think of a forest or the indoors as a dark place, when you're dealing with a sensor the size of the one on the GoPro, you'd be surprised how dark it is in a forest or indoors. There's often not a lot of natural lighting in those locations, and it makes a big difference. The GoPro action camera has a fixed aperture. Most of them have an aperture of about f2.8. So when the GoPro camera is introduced into a setting with less light, the GoPro is going to do two things to compensate for that. The two things it's going to do simultaneously is increase the ISO and decrease the shutter speed. So increasing the ISO is one option to allow more light into the camera, but that does of course introduce some digital noise. So the GoPro also tries to slow down that shutter speed a little bit to let more light in because slowing down the shutter speed will not cause digital noise. But what happens when the shutter speed is slowed down is this does introduce motion blur. And motion blur and hypersmooth do not play well together. And let me explain why. As an example, let's say you're filming at 30 frames per second on the camera. And let's say you step into a dark forest. So what the GoPro is gonna do is it's gonna bump up the ISO. Let's say it was at ISO 400, so it might bump it up to ISO 800. And at the same time, let's say the shutter speed was at one over 240 before you stepped into the forest, but the GoPro drops that shutter speed way down to one over 60 or one over 30. Now the GoPro can only go as far as one over 30 for a shutter speed because that shutter speed would be a 360 degree shutter speed. In other words, the shutter speed essentially matches that frame rate, but with a one and a slash in front of it. And that means the shutter is staying open for 1 30th of a second. And at 30 frames per second, each frame is going to be that same interval. And the goal of the GoPro here is to properly expose your footage. So it's going to use that ISO and shutter speed to make the exposure of your footage what it should be. Unfortunately, one over 30 is too slow of a shutter speed for hypersmooth to work properly because there's too much motion blur in the frame. And it's not necessarily that hypersmooth isn't working, but it's that hypersmooth is not going to help. And here's why. Hypersmooth uses data from the accelerometer and the gyroscope inside your GoPro camera. This data tells the GoPro how much your camera is moving up and down or side to side. And your GoPro is able to compensate and line up those frames so that they're stable. 
In other words, the accelerometer in the gyro data tells your GoPro exactly where it was when each and every frame was filmed. Hypersmooth is able to put each frame where it should be as if the camera were stable. But Hypersmooth does not have a visual readout of each frame. In other words, Hypersmooth does not know what that frame visually looks like. And this would not be an issue if Hypersmooth was turned off because any motion blur would follow the shake of the camera. So if you were doing this, and Hypersmooth was off, the motion blur is going to match each frame where the camera is. And your video would be shaky, but there wouldn't be any jitters or ghosting because that camera shake and that motion blur are going to be with each other in each frame. They're going to be together and look natural. But with Hypersmooth on and slow shutter speeds, the blur does not have the shake matching it in each frame. And this is where we get jitter and ghosting. So now that I've explained this somewhat complex topic in a way that I hope is easy to understand, let's talk about the solutions so that we can prevent this from happening. There are two solutions to prevent this from happening all the time, every time. And basically you need to either have zero camera shake or you need to have zero to very little motion blur in any frame. Solution number one is to use a mechanical gimbal with Hypersmooth turned off. This enables the GoPro to have zero camera shake and any shake that is there will be stabilized by the physical gimbal, but not by Hypersmooth. This means that any motion blur will still be there if your camera has to go to a slower shutter speed, but the motion blur will match any shake in each frame. Now, a gimbal is great, particularly if you're using ND filters or if you're filming in really, really low light, such as like nighttime in a city, where you need to do some special settings anyway to get good footage. But a gimbal, of course, has an additional cost, and it's also one additional piece of equipment you have to lug along with you. And it kind of negates the advantages of having this tiny little camera. Even the smallest of gimbals is going to take up a lot more space than this camera. And if you're on an adventure with a lot of action, you really don't want to have to bring along a gimbal unless there's a very good reason. So solution number one is really not ideal unless you are using ND filters or filming in super low light. Which by the way, if you want to learn more about ND filters on the GoPro, I've linked to my video above explaining how to use these. So this brings us to the second solution. And the second solution is a way to ensure there is zero to very little motion blur on each frame. And the great thing about this solution is it has zero additional cost. In a nutshell, this solution ensures that when you're filming at 24 frames per second, your shutter speed is one over 192 or faster. And if you're filming in 30 frames per second, your shutter speed is 1 over 240 or faster. These are key shutter speeds to ensure you have zero to very little motion blur so that Hypersmooth functions properly and your footage looks great without jitter or ghosting. Now you could manually set these shutter speeds on your GoPro, but this is going to solve one problem and create another problem. Because setting a static shutter speed is going to constantly overexpose or underexpose your footage. And then your footage is still going to be unusable, but for a different reason. So we definitely don't want to solve the jitter and ghosting problem by creating a new problem. We want to solve the problem and have great looking footage at the end. So what we need to do is we need to program the GoPro to not have a shutter speed that's slower than three stops down while still allowing the shutter speed to go faster when needed. So when you bring the camera into bright light, the GoPro is going to speed up the shutter speed to properly expose the footage. And a faster shutter speed results in much sharper, crisper frames with little to no motion blur. So I know all of this may sound complicated, but I'm going to show you exactly how to do this for a simple and effective solution. So all you need to do to accomplish this is install a special firmware known as GoPro Labs, and then all you have to do is scan a QR code that will set the maximum shutter angle on your GoPro. Now, speaking of simple and effective solutions, if you've ever thought about why is my wireless bill so high, then let me tell you about Mint Mobile, who I'm partnering with for today's video. Now, you might already know about Mint Mobile if you've seen any of those funny ads from Ryan Reynolds, who is also an owner. Hey there, it's Ryan Reynolds, owner of Mint Mobile. Enticing, right? But let me quickly tell you how awesome their service is. Mint Mobile offers premium wireless data for as low as $15 a month, and you don't have to sacrifice any coverage, speed, or data. They're built on the nation's largest 
5G network. They keep costs low because they sell direct to you online. They cut out the retail stores and salespeople. Why should you pay more than you have to for access to the same network? Click the link in my description or scan the QR code if you're interested in the best value in wireless. All Mint mobile plans include unlimited nationwide talk and text, plus lightning fast 5G and free mobile hotspot. Mint also offers a modern family plan that lets you set up a super affordable family plan with as little as two lines. I've used Mint Mobile for watching YouTube, uploading YouTube shorts, emailing clients, and I did not notice any difference in speed or performance while connected to Mint's network. Switching to Mint is super easy. Thanks to their digital eSIM card, you can sign up and activate immediately right on your phone from the comfort of your home. And if your phone isn't eSIM compatible, Mint will ship you a new SIM card free of charge. The whole process only takes 15 minutes, and if you get stuck, Mint has a great customer service team to help you through it. When I made the switch, I had Mint Mobile activated and running on my iPhone in less than 10 minutes. I found this to be the easiest and smoothest carrier switch I've ever done. So if you're interested in reliable coverage for a fraction of the cost, go to mintmobile.com gdfh to get started. This is also linked in the description, or you can scan the QR code. And if you've already made the switch to Mint, let me know in the comments below. All right, let's get this GoPro Labs firmware installed, and let's get that QR code scanned so your GoPro footage is ready to be jitter and ghost free. So if you haven't heard of the GoPro Labs firmware before, this firmware is essentially a collection of experimental features that GoPro has been kind enough to make available to us. These features are offered on top of the standard firmware that's available for the GoPro. So installing this firmware doesn't take away any of the other features that are available with each firmware update. This just offers additional features and capabilities that you can tap into. The GoPro Labs firmware is free and can be downloaded at gopro.github.io slash labs. And I'll of course post this link and all others that I reference here in the description below so that you can follow along and easily click those as we go through this process together. So once you've downloaded the GoPro Labs firmware, we're going to need to get this onto the micro SD card in your GoPro so we can update the firmware on your GoPro. This firmware update cannot be done through the GoPro Quick App. It does have to be done using the manual method, which I'm going to explain how to do. So once the firmware has finished downloading, you'll want to connect your micro SD card to your computer. This can be done either via a micro SD card slot if your computer has one, or you can use a USB adapter that allows you to put the micro SD card in it. I happen to have this USB adapter right here. So once you've inserted the micro SD card into your computer, you'll want to extract the contents of the file we just downloaded. And then you'll want to copy that entire update folder to the micro SD card. Once you've copied it to the micro SD card, the contents of the card should look something like this. Next, you'll want to eject the micro SD card from your computer and pop it back into your GoPro. And you of course want to make sure your GoPro is powered off when you put the micro SD card back in. It's also a good idea to make sure you have plenty of battery charge. I usually recommend having at least 30% on the battery when doing a firmware update. Because the last thing you want is for your GoPro to cut off in the middle of the firmware update. Next, you can power on your GoPro and the firmware is going to proceed to install. Your GoPro will restart a couple times during the process. And then when it's finally done, on the front screen here, you're going to see a check mark. So now that you've installed the GoPro Labs firmware, it's time to program that maximum shutter angle into your GoPro. The way we'll do this is by creating a QR code that you can scan using your GoPro lens to apply these settings to your camera. And I'm going to do this on the web page that GoPro has for the various QR code options. And I'm on the page specifically where I can set the maximum shutter angle. I've linked to this URL in the description below as well so you can easily click on it to get to this page. There's also an app called QR Control that you can use on your smartphone to create the same QR code. For the sake of today's video, I'm going to show you the website version of this because it's still going to give us the same resulting QR code. So you can scan the QR code from the website or the app, but I'm also going to display it on my video here for ease of scanning that. So I'm going to set the maximum shutter angle to 45 degrees and I'm then going to set the ISO max to 1600. And the reason I'm setting the ISO max to 1600 is because the GoPro will need to boost the ISO more so than it would otherwise if you encounter a low light situation. 
because we're removing the option for the GoPro to lower the shutter speed as low as it would otherwise. The GoPro is only going to be able to take the shutter speed down to that max angle that we've set, which means either 1 over 192 at 24 frames per second or 1 over 240 at 30. And by the way, if you're filming in 60 or 120 frames per second, I recommend setting it to two stops for 60 frames per second or one stop for 120 frames per second. Two stops at 60 frames per second would be 1 over 240, and one stop at 120 frames per second would be 1 over 240. So it's not a bad idea to also make those codes at the same time if you want to have those available for that. Because when you scan the three stops code, this is going to apply regardless of frame rate. But if you're doing that standard 24 or 30 frames per second, this will work great. And you can always override this code with that code and you can switch back and forth between codes. Basically, whatever code you scan last for that same feature is going to take over as the primary code. I'm also going to check the box that says, make this setting survive a power off. So now all I have to do is scan this resulting QR code right down here. And my GoPro is going to pick up on it. It's going to show this symbol on the screen and it's going to beep. That signifies the GoPro has scanned the code successfully and it's ready to go. Now it is important to note, you will not see these maximum shutter angle settings anywhere in your menus on your GoPro. Those settings are there, they're running under the hood, but they're not going to show in any of the menus. And that's because GoPro does not have a menu option that can show these settings. In addition, if you want to remove it entirely, all you have to do is scan the reset QR code, which I've posted right here on the screen. Do note if you scan the reset code right now, it's going to reset the maximum shutter angle code that you just scanned. So only use that reset QR code when you want to clear this one entirely from your GoPro camera. So once you've scanned that maximum shutter angle code, you are good to go. Your GoPro is now ready to get out there and film jitter and ghost free footage, even if you get into lower light situations like a dark forest or indoors. So what I have here for you to see is some recent footage I filmed on the GoPro Hero 11 using that maximum shutter angle setting at 45 degrees. And all of this footage was filmed in 24 and 30 frames per second. Now this particular day was quite dark, quite overcast. And we did a lot of walking here under dark pines like these right here. And if you see that right there, see how it brightens when I step into that. So instead of the GoPro lowering the shutter speed, what it did was it boosted the ISO. And what I'm impressed with is that footage did not get a lot of digital noise when it boosted it, which was great there. This is another example right here. So the lowest that shutter speed could go in 24 frames per second here was that 1 over 192. And some of this footage was also in 30 frames per second, which was 1 over 240. Now this scene right here, it was actually raining a little bit and very overcast. Normally without this set there, the shutter speed would have gotten lowered and that footage would have looked terrible. There would have been a lot of jitter and ghosting. But as you can see, I moved the camera rapidly there and there was not a bit of jitter and ghosting. That footage looks great. So we've got a few more scenes here where it's relatively overcast and dark. No problems at all there. It looks great. And here it was actually raining, kind of steady. Again, no jitter, no ghosting. That maximum shutter angle is really useful. Right there, it boosted the ISO again. But I don't really see a lot of graininess or noise to the footage, so However, the GoPro is boosting the ISO, whether it's to 800 or 1600 for this scene, it looks great. Until we talk again, happy GoProing.